SDG 11 is a special goal. It refers to cities aiming at localizing sustainable development within the urban environment. In fact, most of the efforts towards sustainable development take place and can be achieved here. SDG 11 explores the interplay between place and society, between physical space in the biosphere and human work. What are cities? Cities are complex systems, actually intertwined systems of systems, where people, the built environment, the natural environment, economy and society coexist and co-evolve. In the era of the digital revolution and dematerialization, cities still play a leading role. For instance, cities represent a unique opportunity of physical concentration of people, services and experiences. All these make cities essential for humanity. Localizing SDGs in cities is a key global strategy because of the relevance of the urban phenomenon. If it is true that cities cover about 0.5% of the world land surface, nevertheless, most of the natural resources are consumed here. Moreover, in the last century, we experienced a rapid urbanization all over the places, even if with different rates of growth depending on the world region. In 1950, 3 billion people lived on our planet, of which 30% in cities. Today, we pass the threshold of 50% of urban population, with 7.3 billion people on Earth. By 2030, cities will account for 70% of the world population, with an estimate of about 5 billion people living in cities. Today, two-thirds of economy is generated in cities, and by 2030, urban economy will represent three-quarters of the total world economy. We are all urban people. Currently, we are experiencing an acceleration in the global policies towards sustainable growth. 2015 and 16 have been representing a sectional milestone for updating urban planning directions. In fact, beside the Agenda 2030 promoted by UN in 2015, we also witnessed the ratification of the Paris Agreement for addressing climate change, the Sendai Framework for disaster risk reduction, the new urban agenda for addressing sustainability in cities. Hence, how can cities contribute to achieve Goal 11 by 2030? What should cities really do according to the Agenda 2030? SDG 11 has set seven main targets to be achieved by 2030. First, to provide access to affordable housing for all. Second, to provide access to affordable transport for all. Third, to improve inclusion through participatory planning and management of cities. Fourth, to better protect world's cultural heritage and natural heritage. Fifth, to reduce exposure and vulnerability caused by disasters. Sixth, to reduce negative environmental impacts of cities. And seventh, to provide access to green and public spaces for all. Seven very ambitious goals, indeed. But what is the real capability of cities as of today, cities are very diverse around the world and are facing different challenges depending if we are referring to developing, emerging or developed countries. Hence, cities have different capabilities and different responsibilities towards the SDGs. We do not have to forget that the SDGs refer to all places in the world, whereas the previous Millennium Development Goals, the so-called MDGs, that have been replaced by the SDGs in 2015, had a focus on developing and emerging countries alone. But these still represent the big, urgent challenge today. Cities in developing and emerging countries are experiencing rapid trends of urbanization with the concentration of people in megacities. There, urban challenges refer mainly to guaranteeing urban inclusion. It means access for all to resources like goods, food, water, energy, and access to jobs and services like healthcare and education. On the other hand, besides guaranteeing minimum standards of urban inclusion, developed cities should accelerate innovation and pave the way towards novel solutions. Designers and planners have terrific opportunities for shaping and localizing innovation in the physical environment. We deserve visionary solutions for urban transition. We need to engage designers and planners to provide new ideas and models for the sustainable city. 
In fact, we expect world-leading cities to generate new models impacting on people's lifestyle and to scale up solutions to be easily replicated to other cities. Many scholars in urban studies evoke a new vision for the city of the future. Beside over-planning tendency, we need to design for some flexibility as well. Cities are complex systems and hard to fully control. In 2016, the so-called Quito Papers envisioned cities to be porous open systems that enhance connectivity of flows and exchange resources according to urban metabolism principles, complex in terms of uses, functions, population, occasions, Synchronous, where many things happen at the same time and unexpected synergies arise and innovation comes true. In complete places that leave room for forms of indeterminacy, that can host change and new forms of adaptation can develop over time. All the above mentioned sustainability challenges offer new opportunities for cities. It is responsibility of developed countries to accelerate innovation. In particular, cities are places to promote social innovation. They are change enablers for supporting new lifestyle and new behaviours, for promoting new growth and consumption models based on circular economy and collaborative consumption, for recognising and exploit the crucial role of technology in supporting sustainable growth and developing dedicated applications, having in mind that we should reduce at the same time the digital divine among people. Cities are also places to boost environmental innovation, to implement innovative solutions where cities can not only welcome nature, but even co-evolve with nature, by providing new paradigms based on biomimicry, hence learning from nature, by enhancing new relationships to natural spaces, especially reinventing the role of peri-urban areas, by reinterpreting pre-modern history, hence learning from the past, in order to rediscover sustainable solutions for a more parsimonious and efficient deployment of natural resources. All those global agendas and strategies call for new solutions in terms of mitigation and adaptation to climate change and towards urban resilience. On one side, mitigation has been the leading strategy over the last three decades at least. In particular, mitigation aims at reducing greenhouse gas emissions by decreasing the ecological footprint of our cities and introducing new energy savings measures. On the other side, the concept of adaptation has finally moved attention on how cities should respond to minimize or prevent the increasing stress and shock phenomena generated by climate change. Hence, we have to find solutions toward the resilient city. In particular, urban resilience has to be intended as an ecological and social phenomenon that requires a holistic vision to urban planning and management. For instance, a new understanding of urban infrastructure has to emerge. We have to shift from intending infrastructure as a purely technical aspect designed top-down towards a new paradigm of socio-technical infrastructure that includes bottom-up and diffuse contributions from citizens. For instance, urban water management should move from the centralised provision of a sewage system towards a more flexible system where the contribution of people through diffused green and blue solutions like small-scale water storage system or green roofs to decrease rainwater runoff will be fully included as part of the water infrastructure. Finally, for all the above mentioned reasons, cities are governmental bodies that require special attention in the framework of the Agenda 2030. If all the goals and targets have been set at the national and international level and nations are taking the lead at the global level, we know that cities, especially megacities, overcome the boundaries of nation and play a crucial role in assessing social and economic change. Cities are a great opportunity for imagining new design and planning solutions to localize the SDGs.